We're standing right outside my house. In front of us, uh, there's a lovely bench which has been bolted to the wall. And then again, fixed to the wall, I've created this miniature library. And it's basically a box with a window on the front. And it says on the front, book swap. It's covered in snow as well. But in there, maybe 60 books put there by members of the public. And this is a, a miniature library for anyone to sort of help themselves to. Uh, that's Luke Jerram, an artist famous for large-scale installations, huge images of the moon in particular. And if you've enjoyed those pianos that are left in public places around the world, playable by passers-by, well, you have Luke to thank for those too. He lives in Bristol, a city, like many around Britain, with historic walls which invite artistic response. Uh, remember, Bristol is the place where local lad Banksy first made his mark. Luke took us on a tour of his favourite Bristolian art walls. The book swap is very much bolted to the wall and a wall is, it can be a, a dividing line between the public space and the private. But also for me, it's an opportunity to create little public spaces and moments of exchange. So it's a place for people to congregate and bring people together. As an artist, I'm int always interested in those thresholds and I often get into trouble where I put an artwork against a wall and then I find out that actually that's private space. And I, if I move it away from the wall by about 50 centimetres, that's OK. And that's suddenly in, in public space. And so that's sort of acceptable. So it's really interesting as an artist trying to make artwork in the public domain, what the rules of engagement are and what you, what you can and you can't get away with. So oh, yes, this seems to be a little plastic crab, perhaps. I don't know where that's come from, a fish. We've got a couple of marbles. We're standing now next to what's known locally as the magic wall. And what it is, is this lovely old stone wall, uh, but all the grout seems to be missing between the stones. And it's left these little concaves and little spaces that children have left teeny little toys for other children to find and discover. It's a really interesting little place of exchange for you know made by children for other children in the area and every time I come past here there are different toys waiting to be discovered it's a sort of changing evolving little community gallery almost it's like a miniature free toy shop there's a badge some chalk oh look and there's a, a spinning top it's quite a nice thing isn't it just down the road from my house is North Street and we've quickly sort of popped into this gallery but it also acts as the headquarters for an urban arts festival called Upfest and it's Europe's largest sort of uh, almost graffiti festival that takes place every couple of years here right in the middle of Bristol. We've popped in to speak with uh, Steve Hales who's the director. Upfest was established back in 2008. 40 artists just got together and painted uh, a few walls around the tobacco factory, which run the, the venues down here on North Street. And it grew. We kind of, first year we had sort of 50 artists, you know, second year sort of about 100, then 150. And uh, up until 10 years on, we have 400 artists come from about 70 countries painting anything. In the early days we had to go to people to try and sort of get spaces but now we actually get offered more than we can handle from a logistics sort of point of view and we paint walls which are 40, 50 foot tall and we have artists come from South America, China, from around the world and they, they create their masterpiece over the course of between sort of either over the weekend of the festival or, or the week leading up to the festival depending on the size of the wall. Right on, on the corner of, of one of the streets is a takeaway and uh, on the side of their building is this 10 metre mural and it's a sort of photorealistic painting of, uh, of Stephen Hawking, a memorial and an artwork in, made in the memory of, of his work. Beautiful actually, it's an amazing uh, patina of painting of splash marks almost that look like kind of miniature galaxies spreading out ac across the wall. This mural of um, Stephen Hawking has been painted by what looks like a, a graffiti artist called Archie, painted in 2018. It's got his signature there, uh, about a metre tall, so he's obviously very proud of it. I think it's a great uh, mural, actually. We're just around the back of the Hippodrome on Orchard Street, and it's just a little narrow street with quite high walls, but it, it has this, these extraordinary acoustic properties where if you make a noise, it clatters and bounces from one side of the wall to another. There must be all these hidden architectural phenomena right around a city that people just don't notice. It's great to be able to share this with you. 
for me, it's a hidden gem of a place. So at the bottom of St Michael's Hill, just behind Colston Hall, next to a cafe. And on the side of the cafe are some tiles. And the tiles are of two different colours, cream ones and, and green. But they create this amazing optical illusion. They seem to be receding as you look away, which is fine. And then, But the layer above, the tiles seem to be getting larger the further away they are. And then the layer above that, again, they're receding. And then the layer above that, they seem to be getting larger. And, and, and of course, these tiles are all exactly the same size. A psychologist about 40 years ago called Richard Gregory, he discovered this optical illusion and, and worked out how it was functioning. And it's, it's known worldwide now. It's famous worldwide amongst psychologists as being called the cafe wall illusion. Here, just in the north of, of Bristol, just on the edge of the city, in, in a district called um, Stokes Croft, which um, is famous really for its urban art. All the walls are covered with amazing graffiti and there's a real sense of the sort of independent spirit of Bristol here. We're right next to Hamilton House, which is an art centre, and on the wall is one of Banks's first artworks called The Mild Mild West. And uh, it was painted in the 1990s. We've got a, uh, a giant teddy bear who's throwing a Molotov cocktail at three policemen in, with riot shields. Painted in response, I think, to the raves. The police didn't like those, those parties from taking place and a scuffle and a fight broke out. And the painting was a sort of response, really, to that oppression by the police and by the authorities. And it's become a sort of icon, really, for the city. But just beneath that is another wall that's been completely covered in beautifully painted bricks. And each brick has been painted by an individual artist and it seems to have lasted here for maybe 10 years and is slowly growing across the wall with maybe a hundred different coloured bricks. It's absolutely beautiful. But I like the idea that every artist has say, look, you've, you've got one brick, express yourself, and that one brick becomes part of this larger exhibition that's gradually stretching down the wall, then down the street. Artist Luke Jerram touring the artistic and historic walls of Bristol.